Just with over 8 years of experience working with companies like Industrial Light and Magic and Ubisoft on recent projects such as Star Wars Rogue One, Transformers The Last Knight and Lawbreakers. If you've ever found concepting in 3D to be difficult, I will teach you otherwise in only a few short hours. In this course, I teach the basic principles of hard surface modeling using Fusion 360. The 3D workflow in this course is cutting edge and it will prove invaluable for your personal and professional projects in the future. My goal is to give you an introduction to my professional production pipeline and teach you techniques to help land your first gig. Sign up today and begin your journey at LearnSquared.com. All right, guys, we're live. Boom. Here we go. It's on. Oh, yeah. It is on. <laughs> nice. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Pretty good, man. The big day. The big. It's on. big, big 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 day uh yeah i'm uh i'm super happy for this one because uh fusion 360 is uh very close to my heart <laughs> and um and obviously that's not it but um but this course uh we started working on it quite a while ago and uh and it turned out pretty fucking awesome i would say pretty pretty awesome uh, yep. But anyway, so uh, welcome guys, uh, everyone who's joining us uh, today. We're streaming with great and awesome Kirill Chapishka. Is that correct? Yes. Hello. Awesome. And your apprentice, Voucher, Voucher Gort. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, and yeah, so uh, today's the day. We're releasing your course. We've been working on it for a while. Uh, I think most of the guys who uh, who are joining us today, uh, people that are watching us today, are are fans of yours or people that are familiar with your work, uh, or just fans of Learn Squared. So I think we could start with just introducing who you are, Kirill, and getting to mm -hmm. know you a little better, uh, what you worked on, uh, what your expertise and whatnot. So so we can have like a good point of reference. For sure. Um... So, um, just like uh, I was introducing myself uh, in the trailer, um, I, I've been working in the industry for the past, uh, well, I want to say like six, seven years um, total. But uh, lately, um, I was lucky. Um, in 2016, I worked in for Industrial Light and Magic uh, on uh, one of the Star Wars movies and a couple of others, like Transformers and Kong Skull Island and a couple more. Uh, oh, you worked and, on Skull Island? Damn, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it looked like there was like a, a um a number of movies and they're still coming out that um I I just like spent maybe like a week or two on it helping um in various areas. Mm -hmm. Uh but um I was basically um uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say headhunted, but like I was invited to ILM uh, based on the the fact that I didn't know Maya, but I did know Fusion 360, and they invited me just for um, the sense of design that I had at the time, mm -hmm. uh, and they they were looking for like somebody who will uh, learn the software as he goes, and and so uh, that design sense is actually like not a lot of people know but for me it comes from fusion because fusion taught me that mechanical sense of design and and that's partially what uh i'm trying to teach um everyone whoever i'm teaching fusion 360 mm -hmm. i'm trying to instill these these same principles of um realistic mechanical design uh using fusion 360 and that's what the course is about because we design not fully functional, but we design a uh, realistic looking gun. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We'll and Valder further. Sorry. Valder took it even further when he made it like actually functional too. <laughs> <laughs> you printed it out, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's that awesome. Fun. Yeah. We'll jump into details uh, later on. Um, but yeah, it, it, Fusion 360 is, is, yeah, it's it's close to my heart. I love this software. I have fond yeah, memories yeah. of of using it for like big projects, and and that's one of the reasons why why we wanted to do something together because like it's it's pretty darn good and it's pretty easy to to start with. 
I think one of the mm-hmm. one of the things that uh, I want to mention and and get people to realize is the fact that um, uh, this course for for anyone who wants to learn hard surface design um, and like get into hard surface modeling, I think this is a this is a, an amazing starter um, because you know I mean we'll, we'll go through some of the lessons that you made and and discuss more details, but from from the glance point of view from sort of like the bird's eye um it's you get to understand the the mechanics and and principles of hard surface in general and then everything else that you can do afterwards is just practice and and figuring out different software and and you know working with different tools but i think this is this is an amazing starter so so if even if you're mm. let's say concept designer this is an amazing tool, an amazing course to take because it will, it will teach you to produce high level work. And I'll talk about this later too, uh, that is production ready in many cases. So, um, yeah, I want to mention, mention that as a really, really important, really important thing. So, uh, how is your, how is your experience? Um, during the course, man, like, uh, I, I'm always curious how that works out. Uh, as in, um, well, first of all, I was lucky to have Vouter as my apprentice because he is a perfect example of somebody who's not going to be using Fusion 360 uh, as like a in-game models or whatever. A lot uh-huh. of people want that, but um, I, I try to stress it that Fusion 360 is very versatile and can be used mostly for concept artists. It can be used in production for like high poly modeling, but uh, me and him are using Fusion in in the way that I see it being used. So just the concept stages, and in that in you know th- that is what I also try to. Um, that's the message to people. Like you can use it at any stage. Uh, it's not just for three D artists. And and my experience with Vouter was great because. Um, as he was asking the questions when we were ta- you know going through the course, mm-hmm. it's it you know how it always goes like you, you you learn a lot more as you explain stuff because the questions that you get um, they somehow and sometimes they go much deeper than your knowledge yeah and you have to, you have to like oh like let me figure this out because I don't actually know like I never claim that I know everything about fusion plus. It's it's actually funny because fusion, like we all know, is used uh, for other purposes, and we're like appropriating it. And uh, the way I'm teaching fusion is strictly with like just my way. And there are many other ways to uh, use it and to learn it. And so whenever I don't know something, I'm um, I'm usually trying to like get deeper into it and and come up with new pipelines and workflows. And that's what that's why I still do teach and still like enjoy it, and and it was a great experience with the powder as well because he was asking questions that made me more curious about certain aspects. Yeah, it's yeah, something yeah, interesting so. there, right? Uh, mm-hmm. when, when you when you when you work with students or apprentices and you realize like oh oh crap like I I knew the answer in my head, mm-hmm. I, I felt like that's that's how it's supposed to be, but you're throwing me a curveball here. Mm-hmm. And now I have to look at it from the different angle. I think that's the beauty of teaching where where you know you, you figure out those things are and 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 your knowledge about a subject gets gets really tight knit, you know, like you're 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 getting really uh, well informed as you're teaching because you just have to. Mm-hmm. You have to look yeah. at the perspective of a student. Um, you look at uh, look at the perspective of the student and what they are asking, and then you realize like, oh, okay, like I, I was. I need to explain it in a specific way so that it's very accessible and easy, easy to understand and digest. So, um, cool, man. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I've been playing yeah. the trailer a couple of times cause it's just like mesmerizing. I it's, you know, it's one of those things that, um, that I like about the courses. It is very similar to, to the kind of work that I was doing for ghost in the shell back in mm-hmm. the days. Uh, you have, and I'll, I'll tell, t- tell it straight away. 
the amount of things you teach compared to what I use to, to work, <laughs> it's mm. insanely, insanely more like vast, vast <laughs> more work, uh, that you're teaching the vast more tools and, and, um, and, uh, and techniques that I, I was not aware of at all when I was, when I was creating, creating the work for the film. Um, I have one question to you. I, I, there's a cu couple of questions that already are there that I'll, I'll be mm -hmm. reading, reading as we go. But one of the questions, and you kind of mentioned or, or glazed on it, was that it's not a course that will teach you how to do a game's assets. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe let's let's jump into that and and explain the differences because CAD software is is different than you know Maya sure. or, or yeah. 3ds Max and whatnot, right? Uh Sure, yeah, I'll be happy to explain. The difference is um, in the origins of the software. Um, CAD is used for manufacturing and has always been. And uh, the software that is right now being used in the industry in games and movies was specifically designed for that industry. So CAD is, is a cross-industry software. So clearly it's not designed for it. And the different, the key differences uh, when it comes down to like, well, let's point out exactly why I cannot just take the model and use it is topology. Uh, the CAD, CAD topology is not utilized in, in, um, in movies or games. Uh, it can be um, converted to triangulated meshes, but they can merely serve as uh, the high poly from which you will make an imp like a, a low poly impression and then you can bake from it. So as is, di like directly, if you take, uh, for example, like the gun that we modeled uh, during the course, it will all be triangulated at that. It can be rendered, as you can see. It can be rendered in Keyshot. It can be rendered elsewhere. But it's not... Uh, suitable for UVing, so that's probably where the main issue comes. Uh, just like the UVs and the topology is too dense and um, not always suitable, but that topology is com totally, like it's been proven, it's totally usable for uh, retopologizing and then baking from it. Uh, okay. And uh, like the easiest example is um, I've worked on one of the like AAA titles, Lawbreakers. It's uh, like out on PS4 and, and PC. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I, I uh, all of all of the assets that I've built over the course of two years, like the the fusion has been part of their pop pipeline, whether they like it or not, right? Because <laughs> I, I, I was I was freelancing and and using Fusion 100%, and they were taking uh, my my high poly meshes from Fusion. Uh, retopologizing and baking, so it's 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 definitely like a proven workflow. Plus, I know they use it at three four three industries, and and like some other companies as well. Uh, people who model hard surface uh, start to pick it up like on their own, just because they see like I mean partially because there's like a number of really good artists working in fusion, yeah, and and uh, uh, they show that oh like this result is much faster because it's it's so uh, easy to use this for hard surface compared to, it's like, uh, you know how ZBrush is for organic modeling and yeah. for characters and it became a standard. Um, my dream is that one day like Fusion will be the standard for hard surface. It will never happen, but whatever. Uh, you never know. I mean, <laughs> looking... I mean, looking at the software, right? It's been how many years has been out? Like three years, and it's, it's changed four years, dramatically. Yeah, yeah it changed mm -hmm. dramatically from the moment it was released, and they're adding those those things, um, those changes. Obviously, there's a couple of things that are still missing: keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, yeah, like uh, the ones that you can assign because there are keyboard yeah, shortcuts. Yeah, yeah, I never teach them because uh, they're like hard coded. You you can change them. Yeah, but it's an amazing. It's definitely amazing software, and it makes it makes jumping into the topic of hard surface really easy because it's not a hard surf, uh, hard software to learn. And what do you think? Like, how long it would take an average person to just understand the basics of how Fusion Three Hundred and Sixty works? Um, I don't know. Let's ask Vouter. Yeah, I went fast. Yeah, man. you you were like you were the student. You were you were you were the OG student of this course. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that was fun. It was super fun. But it went crazy fast. I mean, once you learn the the basics, you know, switching your mind from polygons to the to basics of, uh, you know, ske making sketches and extruding and that sort of stuff, like the Boolean mm -hmm. operations. After that, I think it, once you get that, it goes super fast, you know. So it's 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 just basically getting a grasp on that. Uh, like for, from my experience, point. it's about like two weeks, which mm. in in the timeline of this particular course is uh, maybe the first. Depending on how fast you watch videos, yeah. you know, so how, like people sometimes uh, can just glaze over it, but sometimes you like to pause and like repeat what's being done on the screen. Watch faster, uh, faster. <laughs> <laughs> Never fast enough, uh, <laughs> but like f watch it on fast forward. Uh, <laughs> but um, I think it's about two weeks, maybe less. It depends on like how how fast you learn. But that's UI. to have like a full understanding of the software, right? Mm -hmm. um, but just to get started, it's like today. Yeah, it's it's literally get that an today. hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You get it today, you can you can start building stuff for your renders. Like it's and render them today. That's, yeah, how, that's, that's how easy yeah. it is. That's how and you is. will. That's what I kept doing the whole time because it's so it's kind of fun. It's sort. Of, I told Kirill this too while I'm doing it. It's for some reason it's a big thing. Like I look up against working in for some some stuff in Modo. You know, like I don't want to do it. But then here, because you can just cut punch holes into stuff. You know, and add on. What, I mean that that's like one of the basics, and it become you can just start making stuff right away. You know, as soon as you have that. Yeah. Super fun. That's actually a good point. Like uh, a lot of software that you learn, you have that a little bit of inner fear of coming back every time because of the mistakes. But with Fusion 360, it's uh, like the other way around a little bit. You actually want to stay and keep doing it and keep working. And every time you return, the things that you do are so easy that, um, like, and, you know, don't get me wrong, you will get frustrated at some point. As in, like, when your desire uh, to do more will not be yet, like, backed up by, by the knowledge of the software. Yeah. And yeah. It, it will that's, catch up at normal. some point. But yeah, that's, that's normal. normal. But it's still, like, there is not... The rejection is very minimal, like, between your brain once you understand how CAD works and, and the software. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely one of the easiest ones to actually convey your ideas into reality without going into very technical terms and uh, like topologies and whatnot. So, something like, for instance, when you're when you're talking about hard surface modeling, uh, we're usually talking about uh, sub D modeling, which is like mm -hmm. making sure everything is with squares or rectangles, right? Mm -hmm. Topologies, mm -hmm. all of the, all of the topology is basically uh, squares or rectangles, which is extremely extremely difficult thing to learn uh, and learn it properly, so that your topology is not like millions of polygons all of a sudden for a very simple mm -hmm. thing. Um, yeah. And that's the frustrating part. When I was learning hard surface, that was that was something that was really frustrating to me, because I I'm a concept artist. I'm an illustrator for for. I've been working in concept art and illustration for majority of my life. And um, and I always wanted to learn 3D for hard surface specifically because it's so much easier to make concepts once you have a render. Like you just mm -hmm. over painting and render. It's so easy. And I'll show you guys uh, some of the examples of the work that I did for Ghost in the Shell uh, using pretty much the same methods as you're teaching. Um, and, um, and obviously we'll show what what Vouter have done. And we'll show Vouter's work mm -hmm. uh, first, cool. actually. Um, but to me, to me, one of the sticking points to, to this whole conversation would be that this course, even though you're teaching, you know, you're teaching Fusion 360, you're teaching, uh, I believe, Keyshot, right? And, oh. fo and a little bit of Keyshot and Photoshop. It's, mo it's primarily focused on Fusion, right? Uh, yes, correct. And and also, it's not even... I feel like it's a lot more about design as well. Yeah, that's, that's what I was leading to. It's yeah. it's, it's more of the workflow and uh, the principles and methods of your... Like how you think about hard yeah. surface to problem solve instead of being stuck with the software. I exactly. It's a lot more about 
problem solving in general because in hard surface it's all about problem solving and what methods you're using so like clearly of course like you need to know the basics of the software and the ui and and that's what we learn in the first chapter uh and then once we we have that like you know fusion 101 so to speak then we can start talking in broader terms and talk about more about design more about how you should be thinking to think in CAD and how you should be thinking to achieve realistic and like believable hard surface because it's a big problem the big issue with a lot of designers uh, who come from polygon modeling they don't um, they don't like understand how things work in real world but fusion makes you think within those limits yeah yeah and, and that's why mm -hmm. it's it's believable automatically yeah, you come from uh, from from poly modeling as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're talking from experience. I I I can I can confirm that that thought. Like I I I used to try modeling. I've learned modeling or hard surface generally from the poly modeling, mm -hmm. um, and it definitely it's harder to think about problem solving when you have to think about solving problems within the software. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know yeah, exactly. I mean. Yeah. Whereas here it's like everything is so easy to laid out and it's, it's just super straightforward that it's it's not really like you're really focusing on the design and and thinking process. I think the most important part of this is just that when you when you learn from this course um and i you know i've watched it it's it's fucking amazing dude like when we were when we were thinking about the fusion 360 yeah. course you were the first person to, that came up to our mind thank you because i've i've seen you posting fusion 360 work before it's it's you know it's the way you approach the the the, the, the methodic very easy straightforward approach that you have that makes you understand the software super easily but also mm -hmm. the fact that you focus on the way you focus on, you know, explaining your designs and how functional they, they look. That was just a no brainer. Let's let's just work together. Um, and that's that's how it resonates from the course itself, I think. Um, one of the most more important aspects I also wanted to mention is that Fusion 360 for students is free. You can mm -hmm. sign up. Yeah. You can sign up and get Fusion 360 for free. I think it's three years, right? If you're a student. Yeah. Yeah. So there's literally no barrier of, barrier of entry to start yeah, like, learning yeah yeah it's 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 the most e i think from all the courses we've released apart from the uh purely photoshop ones <laughs> this is like the easiest to get into because you literally yeah. just just sign up for for fusion get it for free buy this course and and and, and start doing shit today like today yeah, yeah, like by the end of the day, yeah. and the like the point of entry is so so low. It's just like with Photoshop, you just need to learn UI, but after that, you stop thinking about how, uh, like what you know, what tools to use. You just, uh, it's like using pencil on a paper. When you draw, the main the main problem is sitting down and like, what do I want to do? You're not thinking about like, how do I move this pencil? Yeah. So yeah. it's the same. And with Photoshop, you, you're not really thinking, like, how do I paint? You're thinking, like, what to paint. And with Fusion, that is taken into uh, 3D. You you stop thinking about UI and you just focus on design. Yeah. I think yeah, I should clarify. Sure. Momo mentioned that, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's technically hobbyist. So if, you're, if you go on Fusion 360 website, as a hobbyist, you're going to have it for free. Yeah, it's not... you don't have to be a student, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be specifically learn squared student to do that. You can no. do it regardless. So um, let me actually pull it up real quick right here. Yeah, you just go here and sign in. I think yeah, download download the trial trial. You can you can start with that and then just sign up sign up as a hobbyist and yeah, keep working. Keep like learn it learn it really fast. They have pretty good database database resources. The problem with that, in my opinion, is that it, it teaches you how to use the software, but it doesn't teach you what your course is about, which is the problem solving, sort of like the, the way of thinking to do the hard surface modeling and designs for, you know, for production. 
special it's specific definitely for oriented for the for our industry for sure everything yeah. that they have for free like available like online on youtube and stuff they 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 just have to get it out because you know they made the software and they have yeah. to explain all the ui and, and stuff but it's also just like in the beginning we mentioned that it's it's more for manufacturing and they show yeah, exactly they're like very proud about like which is awesome but like they're very proud about uh, cam tools as w mm -hmm. you know when it's automation to actually manufacture that on on lathe and stuff and like cnc manufacturing none of that we really care about and none of that yeah. is in the course because we don't need that yeah for entertainment industry the cam tools for you specifically as a as an artist or a designer or a student hobbyist however you want to call yourself it's really not important at all um, yeah. there's like only two or three tabs, uh, which are the most important ones in the software mm -hmm. that you just open up, you pick it up really quick and you, and you work with them. It's so easy. Um, yeah, yeah let's maybe jump sure. into, um, some of the lessons and maybe just go over like glance over what the lessons are about. So sure. people have a better idea. Um, you know, once they sign up, what they're looking into. And then after that, I think we can, uh, there's actually a bunch of questions. We'll, we'll go into questions. I think uh, structurally we'll go, go into questions at the end. Guys, keep posting them. Um, I'm gathering them all. So um, we'll, we'll answer every single question you guys are uh, asking here. Um, but yeah, let's let's go over the lessons. I think after that we can look at some of the Vouter's work uh, and, mm -hmm. then, and then uh, get into a QA. Sure. Um... Do you have the like the um, the page pulled up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. right on the screen. Okay, perfect. So, um mm -hmm. the the course is broken down bro uh, broken down into um four chapters to make it easy. Uh so not a lot of things and the chapters themselves are broken four down. Lessons, yeah. Lessons, yes. And then lessons are um broken down into smaller chapters to uh, make it more digestible. Uh, the first uh, lesson, just like I mentioned, you need to know the basics of UI and just understand uh, the tools and the software itself. Um, and that's uh, quickly learning what that is, why is it different from um, polygon modeling, and then we learn the UI. And then the second one is we already get into modeling and um, I show the CAD logic and just like the thinking that you need to uh, possess, like the type of thinking you need to possess to help you easier break down the shapes in real world to understand how to reproduce them in 3D in Fusion 360 in particular. Um, and uh, we we get we get to modeling pretty much straight away. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. and so the the first two lessons are simple and easy to digest, and then the next two they get heavier. It, it they basically uh, get heavier by the time you want it to be heavier. Uh, and we get into uh, like I called it complex systems. I basically try to un to explain that using everything that you've learned so far very like basic parts mm -hmm. uh, and like very basic uh, instruments you can combine that and start making complex shit right um and then we can on top of that like i just try to show additionally like every other tool that you may want to know and then you know like the exploration of fusion 360 doesn't stop there you keep learning you can yeah. keep uh, finding out new techniques, but these uh, given in like lesson three will be enough for you to model the rifle, model the rifle that Vouter did, and he took it much further than <laughs> like my my course takes. And that's 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 what I wanted to see because it's a perfect example how he only what like he wasn't explained anything outside of the course, right? No, like, yeah, he, sure. he only got the course, and he he shows that the knowledge that you get in the course takes the the design much like f past just the rifle that I did. It makes it that much more complicated. 
because he did the animation, he did the realistic approach of like functioning parts. That's what I want people to understand. Like, you know, that's what I'm teaching. And then in the yeah. final the final lesson, we just take it to Keyshot um, to, for rendering, um, which was also, uh, I believe, Vador, it was new for you, right? Like you haven't, you didn't know Keyshot before. No, yeah, I never used it before. So I just show enough to be able to render your models real quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and like you can use a demo version of Keyshot for that. And, um, yeah. and then we take it to Photoshop, which is just a minor thing in terms of compositing and making your image look good. Um, but uh, yeah. just these four like staples, like from basic to understanding logic to understanding complexity, and w uh, like what makes hard surface look interesting, believable, to finalizing your project. That's pretty much the breakdown. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot. I mean, it's it's a very straightforward course, guys. And and literally, as you said, like you don't have to look for other sources um, to do everything that you need to do with this course. And I mean, we'll jump into Vowder's work uh, in a moment, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you, you, you take this course, you go through the pipeline of, of the lessons and by the end of it, you will know everything you need to know to create the work. So um, that's what, is, that's what's really exciting. Cause it's one of those that it's, it's very easy to digest. It's, it, it's only complex where you want to make, make it complex. Like you want to have, yeah to have like a really complex design, that's where you're gonna make it complex for yourself. Um, and and yeah, it's it's otherwise very straightforward and, and really get, easy to get into. So that's what really, exci really excites me about this one. Um, sure. Yeah, maybe let's uh, let's share some of your work, man. Uh, Vowder, you, you've done some, yeah. of, uh, some of the designs. If you, if, you, if you don't mind sharing your screen, uh, we're using yeah. Skype for the conversation. So just click, mm -hmm. uh, click share, and uh, as soon as it pops up on my end, I'll, I'll start sharing it for you guys too. Um, let, me, let me pull up the... Um, yeah, we're going to look at some of the... So you want to start at work week one or week yeah yeah let's two? let's go step by step and maybe maybe just go over I mean this is gonna give you guys a good good uh, insight of what it what it is like to be a student uh, let me actually make sure that people can see it boom there we go oh. perfect all right we're ready cool yeah uh, Kirill, can you see it as well because um, gonna... I'll uh, I'll like log into the stream in a second so I can okay. see it as well because right now I have the work pulled up where we did uh, overdrawings, basically oh, the oh, very yeah. first mm -hmm. exercise, uh, which was super useful just to break down, you know, yeah. uh, uh, learn just, about those basic shapes. Yeah. Just make sure when you pull up your stream on your end, it's muted so it doesn't echo back. Yeah, I already did. Yeah, awesome. I can see it. Perfect. All right. Cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you can tell better than I can, but <laughs> it was a really good exercise, you know, to, to, to break it down some different objects like the crate and the, the airbrush into different, uh, into those simple shapes that made it easier when we actually went into Fusion 360 to think, oh, I need to do a bevel here or a chamfer and that will give me that shape starting from a square box, you know, or cylinder. Um, so, yeah, this is awesome, man. This is pretty pretty rad. Yeah, it's it's all of the things that you're showing on the screen. Those are the things that uh, are in the bonus content, which is basically your whole journey uh -huh. for the um for the lessons. So cool. Cool. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Kido. Otherwise, I'll go to week two where we actually yep. did uh, some modeling. Oh, oops. Yep. Yep. Um, week two. So first. Kirill, your assignment was to do a, like a design from from reference, right? Uh, we mm -hmm. did that first. Yeah, like a real prop. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that was awesome because it was normally I, I, I would never do that from my, you know, uh, out of myself or, you know, from my own initiative. But 
you really there's some shapes for example in this camera that were i had no idea how i would have tackled it and you you helped me with that in the in the feedback sessions a lot but once you figured out the workflow basically about how you can use the tools and it and it goes back a lot of times to the to the basic tools but just how you can exactly. use them in different ways yeah was super useful you know like in the end, it's so this, crazy, this, dude. Yeah. It looks so good, and it's it's funny because yeah. it's literally just you on the second week. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, this yeah. this was the this was the first thing, uh, but but you know that was because it was so accessible. This tool, I mean, I just pulled up the the you know like some orthographic views or whatever you call that, and that made it because because it's like extrudes and that kind of yeah. stuff. So it made that. I mean, in in. Uh, in like mode or something that would have this would have been hell for me also because i'm not that good at it but you know like i was like whoa i can actually make hard surface stuff now whereas before i would like fuck it i'll just draw it you know because i can't be bothered <laughs> with modeling yeah it, it again <laughs> like in the regular hard surface uh modeling when you when you learn it uh you know with maya moto or max and whatnot like the tools yeah. just get in the way they're becoming oh, sure. they're becoming a problem. You have to really study and get really familiar with all of the tools in order to to make it right. Um, yeah. Whereas here, it's like literally what you're looking at. This is, by the way, production ready. Like you can mm -hmm. not only for concept like for concept art, this is already ready. In film, this is so valuable, and I'll show you guys mm -hmm. like right after uh, we'll show you the work. I'll show you guys uh, <laughs> some of the Ghost in the Shell stuff. Um, yeah. but it's, it's re literally ready to go like this. Yeah, you're boom, right. Done. You know what? And, and, uh, so this, I told, uh, Kirill, we talked about 3d printing, uh, a lot as well, uh, in the sessions. And cause my main interest with this is, is 3d printing. And this is so perfect for it because with 3d printing, you're working with clearances and stuff. And this was actually, I could just print this right away and, uh, Everything fit together, great, you know. And uh, so turned out to me, nice too. Like the final of the case, if you have an image. That's yeah, I have a. Uh, I have it here. <laughs> that's it's like so a six crazy, scale. dude! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I, you I actually printed some. it out. This is so crazy. <laughs> yeah, I have it right in front of me on my desk, and it works. It can open up. I ordered some mini screws, micro screws online, that have a like only one millimeter diameter for the metric people in here again. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's super fun, man. Like in Moto I, or in any 3D program. I, I mean, I love Moto, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't have even try doing this, you know, because it's just the hassle. And now it, it's fun. Like, oh shit, what else can I make? You know. So yeah. it's. I don't know. It's That's what's crazy fun. about the software. Like, and you know, again, like Kirill, you're teaching uh, how how to build proper stuff. Like how right. to think as a hard surface designer but mm -hmm. then the software yeah. also allows you to do this yeah let's print it out yeah. like why not that's so yeah crazy. exactly and like uh you said before Kirill, that that this program forces you to think you know like an engineer or in some you know like a like a product uh, maker in some sort of way exactly that makes the step to something like this like 3d printing i mean after this i worked on a uh, you know, some movie project where I did some, you know, uh, design that afterwards I gave them a file that they could 3D print, you know, so that to, to make the step easier of uh, getting it into a prop or whatever the hell they want to do with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's so valuable, you know, because I could just tell my client, like, look, because I want my design to be the, the thing that I see on the screen. So I can just tell them, like, hey, guys, you can just print this out right now and, you know, whatever, use it. Whether they do it or not, I don't know, but but at least try to bridge that gap a little bit. Yeah, you have that option. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this was some. Uh, uh, I don't know if you see it through, but this was the week three exercise. I thought was really interesting. Where yeah, you, I see it. Yeah, where you you make us do something really an intricate design and then also a really simple design. Now mm -hmm. for me, I tried to combine it into one, but um, I think for, as a design exercise to get better at design, that was super uh useful to do you know because um yeah did you use key shot for that or um yeah this I, I actually did this uh, when we did the key shot uh 
part of the class, I went back to this model and oh, okay. did the key That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and for those who are not familiar with the software, um, Fusion 360 has its own renderer as well. Like it's not as good as uh, any other renderers that are out there. You know, if you compare it to Keyshot, there's it's a night and, and day, but it still gives you a good uh, presentational skills. Like it, it just allows you to do a quick presentations without going too technical because it's super, as anything in that cell, it's super easy to use. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. For sure, really accessible uh, tool. I mean, I'm not, not, uh, I don't know anything about rendering, and even I could do like with the gun. I'm, I'm pretty happy about uh, yeah. the, the way yeah, the yeah. software now. But uh, yeah, that, 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 but that exercise as a design exercise as well was very uh, useful. You know, it was super. Uh, it really makes you use the tool makes you uh, take the most out of the tool by doing very intricate stuff like small little details and then big shapes as well um so yeah that week three was very valuable and you you go over um Kirill on how to export and make sure that the files are ready for render right absolutely yeah, yeah. we take them hmm. various um like options for export from fusion to keyshot uh, and then in we 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 talk about uh, STL format for print, uh, and like I sh I think uh, in the sessions in the feedback sessions I show um, what it would look like in the printing software. Yeah. But mm -hmm. in the class itself, I I show how to export it in various formats uh, like STL and uh, IGS and step yeah. for Keyshot. Yeah, I think it's important to mention because uh, I mean this question is uh, I think it's already there, but it will pop up a couple a couple of times. Like, oh, can I use it with Octane? Can I use it with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Keyshot is just a platform, but the I, the workflow is gonna work exactly the same as with the other software. I I can I can tell you that because I used it with Octane. I used it with uh, V-Ray, and I tried mm -hmm. using it with uh, Arnold when I was learning Arnold. And the workflow was exactly the same. It was. It was. You just get the geometry forward. out. That's, yeah, that's oh, all cool. you need. Super easy. Yeah. Nice. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, man, you, you killed it, man. You you, you literally killed it. <laughs> it looks yeah, so awesome. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, dude. Yeah, you, you the, made the scopes. Was... The scopes are my favorite part, like hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Yeah, thanks. It was fun. I mean, it's a bit bit goofy, but but you know, I think it's no, kind it's, of fun. It's, but you it's you awesome. came up with that overlay. Uh, Thing, Kirill. So thanks for that tip, mm -hmm. the overlaying the different sides to create one like shape. But yeah, yeah it's super fun. I mean, I, I think if you see in the feedback session, I, I got so addicted to this stuff that I did like one stream of, I don't know how many hours, but I just didn't even want to stop, you know? And yeah. that, that's not, that, that is something that I've never had with 3D. So that's why, I mean, right now, I, uh, for my work, I used I started using Fusion a lot actually, just because it's uh, it's 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 also fun, you know. It, it's not uh, like we talked about it. The accessibility makes it very just yeah. fun to do stuff. In. Very easy, very easy to get into. Man, like I, I've mentioned this many times uh, before, and not specifically about Fusion, but my my journey as an artist, uh, mm -hmm. where you know it took me what 15 years to to be where i'm right right now um and it was like a self self uh, learning experience when i was working on ghost like i fucking wish that this course was out already because <laughs> it would make my work so much easier I, like i had to build up my skill sets uh to to be there right uh because there, yeah. I, I literally didn't use any um any uh, learning uh, platforms or anything like that to to learn mm -hmm. the software, I was just like experimenting mm -hmm. with the UI. And again, like it's not it's not a hard so software to get into, even without training. Like you you can fig eventually figure out everything on your own. But when you have mm -hmm. like a guidance uh, made by a professional, and yeah. it's by a person that actually works in the industry and knows all the ins and ins and outs, it's just like makes. It makes it a breeze. You're not wasting time uh, on on doing meaningless things or on doing busy work or things that you think that okay, like I'm learning. It takes me. A, it's taking me weeks. 
uh, but I'm still learning. Yeah, you are, but you, you could you could have done it by just investing a little, a little bit in yourself. Uh, you yeah. could have done it in a day. And that's I think that's what is important about this course. It's just like like you, you literally pick it up and and in a matter of uh, two weeks or something like that, you're production ready. In terms of like yeah. technical aspects and everything, you're you are production ready, uh, and everything else just is, is just an experience and practice and repetition from 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 this point. So, and again, there's no barrier of entry. You don't have to be a designer. You don't have to know anything about art. Pick this course and be ready to to design things. Yeah, I, wanted to add, uh, I wanted to add that it's even better because. Like it goes further. If you bring your design knowledge into the software, it becomes like ten times more powerful. If you come in with no knowledge uh, of design at all, like you can, uh, you definitely can work. But if you already have been like trying uh, modeling and trying uh, hard surface design, you will definitely feel like that, that that's your cup of tea. Everything that you've ever wanted is there. Like yeah. it, it's there's uh, everything that you wanted to do and you're like oh shit like the booleans are so hard in poly, they're they're the easiest thing here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no excuse not to do a certain add a certain thing, you know, to to the to your design. Yeah, it's so it's yeah. so straightforward. Again, like you don't you can yeah. be a Joe Schmo and and oh I I've stumbled upon this um this Twitch stream this amazing awesome. Twitch stream by the best school on earth, <laughs> Learn Squared. <laughs> and um, don't I don't know what those guys are talking about. Well, if you're that kind of person, just pick up the course and design stuff for films. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but but literally, it's yeah. it's literally that. It's just you learn from from this. You can you can start building as soon as you finish the course. You you have all of the tools for you to be ready to design. Uh, and then everything else is just knowledge and practice that comes from your, you know, life experiences. Your design says, yeah. sense comes from your obviously life experiences, but all the tools that you need for hard surface uh, designs. This, this I can I can tell you from my uh, experience. If you complete this course, you you already you can already call yourself. Uh, you you have all the tools needed and all of the knowledge needed to do um, uh, hard surface design for film. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, there's literally nothing else you need to you need to know. Like, this alone is enough for you to, to be ready, like, be ready in terms of, like, all the tools and assets that you need to have in order to work for film. And obviously, everything else, the quality of your work will come from practice and all of that. Um, but you don't have to look for more resources. Like, it's al already there. It's it's already in in this course, so I want to get show you guys because uh, mm -hmm. that's uh, that's related to what I'm talking about. I want to show you some of the work that I've done for Ghost in the Shell real quick, and from there we'll uh, jump into questions. I think because um, there's quite a bunch of questions that we need to answer. All right, let me guys uh, let me show you guys, and it's again like I wish I had this course um, when. Uh, when I started working on it, and um, but I didn't. So, <laughs> but either way, um, I used pretty much very similar, less structured workflows. Um, I would say taking the course and then working on Ghost in the Shell would probably make me do twice more designs for the director um, than I did. But it's still it's still there, and I I just wanted to show you that yeah like I used uh, Octane for instance for my renders, mm -hmm. and uh, and it doesn't really matter like what 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 is the rendering software that you use you can you can literally take the uh, the um, the render from the from the software itself from Fusion three hundred and sixty and that's gonna be sufficient enough for most cases, um, yeah. and then maybe pull it up in Photoshop do a little, a little bit of overpaints and whatnot but. Uh, yeah, f like I, I literally built built the the guns for the film in a very similar fashion as you did, Wookie, uh, Vouter, <laughs> Wookie, Wookie. That's how you you have your nickname. Yeah, Wookie. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I worked in a very similar way as you did uh, in your mm -hmm. in your apprentice sessions. Um, and the results were similar because like when I went to uh, on the set for uh, of the film, they printed it out from my files. Like the, yeah, the files right? I've provided That's them, awesome. the IGS files that come from the software, they printed it printed it out uh, from there. So yeah, yeah that's really cool. Yeah, super straightforward for film. It's 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 this, and you're ready to go. For games, as you mentioned, Kirill, like there are methods for for doing uh, retopologizing re of of your yep, geometry. Yep. And in most cases, if you're if you're a production designer, like if you're work not production designer, if you're working in production as a, let's say concept artist, like you don't need to ha know any of that. But if you if you work as a hard surface designer, I'm pretty sure there are there are areas where starting with fusion and doing retopo is going to be more sufficient than doing everything um, from scratch in, in poly modeling. It's, it's, I, I totally it, agree. Yeah. And yeah. I would, I would, I would, I would assume so because like that, that's how character artists work in in video games industry. They they zbrush uh, their models mm -hmm. and then they do full retopology on top of that. So the sculpts are not production ready at all. They're like far yeah. from that. They are even worse than this because <laughs> mm -hmm. there's just far more polygons in there. Um, like the, the meshes are so dense, they're, they're unusable outside of the software. And then you just do retopo and get the, get it to uh, to be a game ready. But that's how, the, in, in games, that's how you would do it anyways. You would have to work on the model until it's optimized to a point where you just cannot cut anything out, out of it anymore uh, without losing quality. Yeah. So, uh, cool. All right, let's jump into questions. Yeah. There's a lot of them and uh, we'll try to get them answered all um uh, as much as we can uh let's see do uh i think the first one which is going to be uh i think appeared once uh i hope it's not going to be your um i think uh, s someone asked it once uh but it's an, an important one kirill you already done a course for you artsy right uh and someone asked that uh, what is the difference between that the one you've done there and this one um, I don't even know if that's still up because URT like was what like three years ago, mm. um, and the difference is everything. Um, right. Like besides besides me showing the UI, uh, this is a completely different uh, model, and uh, that's me three years smarter than before. Right. Uh, yeah. Three years is huge. I, I I'm looking yeah. at. Um, I remember my course that I've released for uh, futuristic character design. A lot of things still apply, but if I made the course today, it would be like tenfold better and easier. That's um, the answer, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's definitely. I mean, not only different different designs, but also your your design sense, the the structure and everything. Uh, it's just it's just a way better package. Uh, it's it's more. I, I guess the only thing that is the common denominator is the software that you used. <laughs> Cor correct. This, this mm -hmm. also this course is uh, oriented more towards design rather than the software. Every course that I've done before, which is UARTC, and more recently I've done for Mold 3D, uh, those courses you can still pick them up. Like, don't get me wrong, but those are more about software. And this course is actually more about design, which I value like far more. You can learn software on your own uh, for most cases, but this is some something that I, where I'm showing you the pipeline and the ropes of like hard surface specifically. Right, right, mm -hmm. makes sense. Uh, there's a bunch of questions that are mm -hmm. directed to your workflows specifically. Uh, I want to just first maybe answer questions that are directed uh, or uh, related to the course itself sure. and then we'll jump into the other ones uh, let's see I'm just scrolling there is so much conversation on the you guys are awesome there's so much conversation going on <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see mm -hmm. I guess the course is so straightforward that there's not that many questions related to the course itself because there's literally I mean Honestly, there is not that much you can ask. Um, yeah, there was a question. I'm using Octane Render with Cinema 4D. 
how is the workflow with, to that platform? And that's explained in your course, right? Um, but that's specifically with Keyshot, uh, but the same principles would apply with other softwares, correct? Yeah, once you export the once you get the geometry out, uh, it's up to how you know the software it's it's getting into. So I'm just showing Keyshot, but if you already know Octane, that means that for you, first three out of four lessons will be more valuable, but then the fourth lesson will still show you how to export and stuff. So mm -hmm. you're you're still getting more than ninety percent of like valuable info. Yeah. Um, someone asked about the retopology. Actually, um, the question was: uh, Say I'm really good in fusion, and I want to do concepts for film. Um, do I need to be able to retopo to get a job, or is it still something other people might do further down the pipeline? Um, realistically, uh, you never know. So some production houses require you to do all of it. Some production houses will say we split it, and you just do design, and somebody else will somebody else's job will be retopologizing. So um, that's. Once, once you know um, which company you want to work for, just right. find out more about their pipeline and then start preparing yourself towards that. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Ryan asked about printing and, and working on, uh, like, getting your models being printed. Um, in your workflow, do clients typically want you to design so the models can be printed? Um, it's interesting because lately I've f started focusing more on industrial design uh -huh. uh, rather than like films and games. So I've been working for the past year, I've been exclusively doing work for print uh, or for manufacturing. Right. Um, and as I was making that course, and even with Vouter in the conversations, like the first two sessions are like a lot about 3D printing. And, and right. it's definitely yeah. worth right. getting that. The, the the package with the mentorship because if if you're interested in printing we talk a lot about it like extensively um and the um, squared package which is the um the one that has uh, the extra the extra content from Vouter's journey yep yeah. so um i would highly is... recommend that one as well like seeing a journey of an artist like seeing a journey of an <laughs> artist or a student uh, the struggles that they have, the problems that they, they have to approach and having that conversation. Uh, if you cannot be on the mentorship itself, like that's the best value in my opinion because that it just gives you that extra angle. Like, hey, uh, that person had exactly the same struggles as I as I had, you know? It yeah. gives you a, a better perspective on the software. You don't feel like you're just watching the video and there are questions that are unanswered. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, did I answer the question? Yeah, I think so. I think, so. and I and I'll add to that that uh, it's gonna be more common practice. I think that the things uh, your your design is supposed to be production ready, whether it means they're printable or not, that's you know that's that's part of it. Uh, as I said, like for Ghost in the Shell, that was like a byproduct. The fact that they didn't have to redo the work that I've done and basically made their lives easier. They didn't have to spend uh dollars on another person to take my models and rebuild them from scratch they could literally just take that and if there was any problems they would take one of the set designers or someone who is more advanced in the software or in, in in cad design or whatever and they would just clean it up and clean it up cleaning it up is super f much faster than doing everything from scratch from sketches or or drawings you know yeah. Um, so I would say that's that's becoming more of a common practice. It's it's a always a bonus. Like, don't get me wrong. It, it might not be required, but it's always going to be a big bonus if you can do that. Um, I think what's what's really cool with this, and it's sort of like a, it's less of an epiphany, but more of an acknowledgement, is that um, this course what it what it does it's it's not it's not your typical like oh this is hard surface for entertainment design. Uh, you, you sort of like with the the way you did it, it's almost tra transcends to industry. So if you even if you are doing industrial design, you'll find a good information in it. 
I oh, think. Sure. For me, it was perfect for the 3D printing. I could apply directly what, what was taught in the classes to, to print that crate and now other stuff, you know? Yeah, and you, make the, a, you made a sick-ass crate, dude. I'm jealous. I would <laughs> want to have it on my, on my, uh, on my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, Kirill, when you work for clients, do you do uh, 2D sketches or do you present them uh, in, um, any ideas before jumping into Fusion or do you do them uh, directly as 3D? Um, sometimes, uh, I do sketches, um, if, if, if it's a big project, you want to do sketches to avoid further complications down the pipeline. Uh, but even then, um, it, it, a lot of times you will still have to come back and fix stuff. Uh, and luckily fusion has some magic that allows you to fix things very quickly yeah. in some things in other things you're like oh shit like this requires like rebuilding the whole thing so and that's why proper foundation um um is required i think it was one of the what well, who was the designer for apple um the the guy gosh the guy I'm, you're asking the wrong person to remember uh, names I, <laughs> he said that like the minus maybe yeah, I Johnny. Think the, the, yeah, the main the main guy is John Eaves. He said that minor beginning, uh, minor changes in the beginning of, of the product pipeline, uh, kind of like bring major changes later, right? So, uh, if you figure out everything from the very beginning, um, you will have less to fix later, which means if you know how to do sketching and stuff, do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to. I'm, I'm trying to force that. Sorry, I, I'm correcting myself. Jonathan Eve, uh, or Ive. I don't know how you spell it correctly, but yeah, that's the main guy. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to filter through the questions to. If there is a question that asks, should I take the course? I would say yes. <laughs> of course. Of course you should. Uh, Actually, uh, Kirill, the some of those tips that you do you gave with the, I think we talked about that. Uh, there's some stuff that made it so much easier. Like, uh, well, you go into it, but the leading faces, timeline, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That also is a huge part of me for for um, for using Fusion. The like you said earlier, fixing stuff is is very uh, doable. You know, in uh, in, in the tool. Just yeah, if you if you like go the proper way uh, about the timeline and features on the timeline, it's uh, you know changing the dimensions of something is as easy as going back and like let's edit that. Yeah. Uh, it it does have consequences, and the more the further back into the timeline you go, the more consequences it will bring. Mm -hmm. Just like going going back in time, it's exactly like going back in time. I I, I love the <laughs> comparison. Like if you step on a butterfly, everybody is a fucking dinosaur in, in our age. <laughs> uh, but like that's exactly how it is in fusion. If you go far back and start changing stuff, it will break it. But it depends. Yeah. Everything yeah. is yeah. connected. I got you. Uh, did you go on other software, ZBrush, uh, et cetera, to, for assembling like uh, Exoskeleton for, or it's only Fusion, uh, Fusion 360? Who is that question for? What Exoskeleton? Uh, it might be actually for Vouter. Because you, you had this uh, sort mm -hmm. of uh, frame, right, in your, in your crate. Like all of it was... Oh, Fusion. in the crate. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah, the yeah. answer would be it's all in the course. Like it's, yeah. it's all Fusion 360. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just Fusion, Fusion yeah. 360. But um, it's interesting because if I had to answer that, <clears throat> uh, I was going to say you can take parts from Fusion and do assembly anywhere you want. It's it's great for assembling in ZBrush it's for more complex models. It's great for assembling in Maya or Max because right. all that geo, once you get that geo out, you can do anything you want with it in terms of without changing the parts itself. It's it's perfect for kid bashing. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you a question. I mean, it's gonna be a summary of few uh, conversations on the stream and questions. Um, 
you you picked up uh, Fusion 360, but not Moi, right? The, the Moments yeah. of Inspiration. Have you ever used uh, Moments of Inspiration? Yeah. Um, I, I know that Vitaly uses it, um, and, and he used it for Ghost in the Shell as well. Uh, it's, it's also CAD. Yeah. So it, it's it's the same question as should I use Blender or should I use Maya? Right. Like Blend Blender is definitely sufficient enough for for it, and it, you can be an absolute master and like amazing results in Blender as well. It's just the differences in the UI. The modeling logic and principles are the same. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, I think what's really important is that your your course is really. I mean, it, it is Fusion three hundred and sixty. But it's focused on the on the problem solving and and the thinking processes, not just software. Um, and yeah. you can apply that knowledge to pretty much any other software as well. I I had an experience with you working with Moi. Moi has some very interesting tools that Fusion three hundred and sixty doesn't have. But in my in my very subjective personal opinion, I prefer Fusion. Mainly because how easy it is to get into. With Moi, you have to uh, customize your UI to uh, mm -hmm. enable enable its full potential because there's many tools that are not visible for you until you make shortcuts for them. Um, whereas whereas with this, it's everything is right at your fingertips and you're ready from to the go. Shelf. Yeah, right from the shelf. You see it and you and you apply it and it works. Uh, and I think that was that was like the things that made for me to stick around with fusion i mean even though i still missed the ability to customize my key uh my uh shortcuts but like for instance recently they've added this feature where you press i believe s key and you can make it it's almost like a little toolbar that pops mm -hmm. where your mouse is and you can have all of your mm -hmm. favorite tools right there at your fingertips so it's very mm -hmm. easy very easy to get into um Man, I think we answered all of the questions, and I think also that uh, we're we're gonna be thinking about wrapping up as well. Yeah. Uh, that was yeah. a good conver good conversation, man. Um, really good, really good one. I, I I hope we answered all of your questions, guys, in order to get you to understand what the course is and what is it about. Um, but yeah, dude, I'm excited about this one. As I said, if I if I knew it, if I if I had learned Squared before, uh, before uh, Ghost in the Shell, <laughs> I would make sure this was this was this was one of the first ones. <laughs> yeah, because it's, awesome. uh, it's just it's literally really so easy to learn from this one, and um, and yeah, yeah. I, I highly advise to for you guys to look into it. Uh, it's on sale right now. You can you can go on the website and purchase it right now. Mentorship uh, seats are available. If you want to have one like uh, an actual classroom uh, experience with Kirill, that's where it should be looking at. Uh, if yeah. you're just interested in, in learning uh, and learning at your own pace, uh, you, you can pick up either the basic or learn squared packages. They're available right now. And yeah, I cannot, I just cannot wait to see all of the, uh, um, uh, the work that comes out of it, man. This is this is a this is a yeah. good one. I'm I'm excited. It's gonna be it's gonna, it's be, gonna awesome. be cool. I mean, we already have a good example with you, Vouter. So <laughs> you killed yeah, thanks, it. Like you, you knocked it off the park right away. So <laughs> uh, that, that's, awesome. that's that mentorship, right? So take that mentorship, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, like not even twice, maybe like more than than the actual basic course in terms of the amount of knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that um all right guys if you if you ever have any questions and if we missed something feel free to uh contact us uh through the site or discord channel uh momo is always there to uh to help you out with any questions we uh if they're appropriate we're gonna direct them to Kirill or me or whoever whoever needs to uh thanks for joining us tonight or today or whatever you are and uh yeah mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited man I'm, I'm i'm super yeah. happy for you because this is a good one cool. definitely it's awesome all right cool. guys um take care let's wrap it up and uh i'll see you around all right thank you, thank you. Bye. See bye, -bye. cheers <laughs>